Now, it feels like I've read this introduction a few times before, but Theresa May was back in Brussels this week as she tries to find a solution to the issue of the Irish backstop. Downing Street had hoped to put a new deal to Parliament this week, but now that's looking increasingly unlikely. So is there a way through? Joining us now from Cork is Ireland's Deputy Prime Minister, Simon Coveney. Thank you very much for being with us uh, on the show this morning. Thanks, Sophie. Now, this weekend, uh, three members of the Cabinet signalled that they would prefer to vote for a delay to Article 50, an extension to Article 50, and a delay to Brexit if there's no agreement that is reached. Now, of course, we know how much a no-deal could impact Ireland. So is this a move that you welcome? Well, look, I mean, I think I, I need to be careful not to get into the, the politics of Westminster, but, I mean, we do know that, uh, that the Parliament has already voted uh, against a no deal, uh, in principle at least. Uh, and so, you know, we'll have to wait and see what happens on Wednesday, uh, whether there is a, a new amendment that comes forward to try to take no deal off the table. Um, but look, you know, I've said this week very strongly that everybody loses in a no deal situation. Britain loses, Ireland loses, the EU loses. Uh, I don't think anybody can make the case sensibly. Uh, for uh, an unmanaged no-deal Brexit uh, in terms of the impact that that would have on all of our countries. Um, but look, where we want to be uh, in the next few weeks uh, is with a deal, uh, a managed, controlled uh, exit from the European Union uh, for the UK, um, moving into a transition period which gives, gives everybody the time and space to adjust to the new realities, uh, to put in place what we hope will be the closest possible future relationship between Britain and the EU and, of course, Britain and Ireland. Uh, and we've been working towards that for, for three years now. Uh, that is why we supported the withdrawal agreement at the end of last year. Um, and that's why we supported the Prime Minister uh, in terms of the compromises that the EU had to make uh, and that the UK had to make uh, to get that withdrawal agreement uh, agreed between the governments. Of course, we're now at a process of ratification, both in the European Parliament and in the British Parliament. That's proven very difficult for the Prime Minister. Um, and she continues uh, those efforts again this week. But from an Irish perspective, you know, our position is clear. Uh, we want a future relationship uh, that is controlled and managed. We want the closest possible relationship with Britain uh, that Britain is willing to negotiate. Uh, but there are some uh, issues and some flexibilities uh, that Ireland can't show, uh, particularly after a deal has been done on the withdrawal agreement, uh, and that is that we can't undermine a peace process on the island of Ireland, north and south. Uh, we have to ensure that the commitments that have been given by the British government and the Prime Minister to provide guarantees around an absence of physical border infrastructure between the two jurisdictions on the island of Ireland, uh, that, that those commitments are followed through on uh, so that we don't see uh, border infrastructure having the kind of corrosive impact on relationships on the island of Ireland that takes us backwards rather than forwards. Uh, and I think that has been a very consistent message coming from Ireland over the last three years and indeed very much backed up by the EU uh, and also supported uh, by the British Prime Minister. So we have to find a way now of getting that done. Uh, the EU has been very clear uh, that we can't reopen the withdrawal agreement uh, for that to be renegotiated or changed. And so we are in the space of trying to provide reassurance and clarification uh, for the British Parliament uh, to allow them to, to ratify this deal uh, and to reassure them that actually this so-called backstop, which has had so much debate uh, both in Ireland and Britain and across the EU, doesn't represent a threat to anybody. Uh, in fact, it's quite the opposite. Uh, it, it's providing a fallback insurance mechanism in case the negotiations don't uh, result in a resolution of this border issue, uh, that this is a temporary uh, insurance mechanism that can take effect while we put in place a more permanent solution between the UK uh, and British negotiators. OK, uh, well, sorry, let's talk between about the... EU the... And, and the British government. Let's talk about the um, backstop, shall we? Because it does seem as if Theresa May has put all her eggs in one basket, which is to try and get some kind of movement on the backstop to try and make sure that enough Conservative MPs vote for the deal. I just heard you say there that there is no reopening of the withdrawal agreement. So what exactly is on the table? Because clearly, if you say that you don't want a no deal, there's going to have to be some kind of movement on the backstop if Theresa May is going to get this deal past her own backbenchers. What's up for grabs? 
Yeah, but I think it's important to understand and for British viewers to understand that this isn't just about Westminster. This is a deal that has to get through a European Parliament as well. There but are it 28 have to governments get through the involved Westminster in this negotiation. Parliament. Yes, yes it does. Uh, if, if Britain wants to, uh, to get a deal and avoid a no deal. Uh, and that's why we wanted to get through Westminster. But you can't ask Ireland to compromise on something as fundamental as a peace process and relationships linked to the Good Friday Agreement in order to get a deal through uh, which is about placating uh, a, a group within the Conservative Party uh, who are insisting on moving the Prime Minister away from her own position. So to be uh, clear I mean, don't then, forget what the backstop is... is. So to be no, clear then, is no, but a time Sophie, it's important to, just, just to be clear, Sophie, because I think it's important that people understand this, the backstop was a British government construct as it was uh, an EU or an Irish government construct. This is, this is about a shared responsibility for Britain and Ireland as co-guarantors of a peace agreement in Northern Ireland to ensure that we don't go backwards, that we don't, uh, as an unintended consequence of Brexit, see the re-emergence of physical border infrastructure between two jurisdictions, a border infrastructure that in the past uh, uh, has had awful memories. Uh, and so we have said for two years now, Ireland has said, look, we need to provide a guarantee here to people living in border counties, north and south, uh, on the island of Ireland, that whatever happens in Brexit, they're not going to face physical border infrastructure again and the security infrastructure that would be needed uh, to, uh, to facilitate that. That surely is not an unreasonable request. And so, because then of British red lines, around leaving the customs union, leaving the single market, as well as leaving the European Union, we had to design a way of providing those guarantees and reassurance that is legally sound. And the idea now that you would put a time limit on a backstop, in other words, if we can't negotiate a solution on the border through the future relationship, and the backstop kicks in on a temporary basis, that we would put a time limit to that backstop, but not be able to answer the question, what happens after that time limit runs out, and what replaces the backstop? Uh, then it wouldn't be a backstop at all. So okay, what so we're very saying clear is that we are open. on no time limit on the backstop. No, How about no, a but we are, we are open exit. and we always... How about a unilateral no, Sophie, exit mechanism? So, sorry, I mean, you're doing the job now for lobbyists in the UK with respect. Um, I'm just trying the, to find out where the red lines backstop. are. Sorry, the, it's been very clearly... Uh, uh, the, the red lines from an EU perspective, not just an Irish perspective, are very clear. The withdrawal agreement is not up for renegotiation. The withdrawal, the withdrawal agreement wording is not going to change. And so what, the space that we are in here is to try to provide reassurance to a majority of people, hopefully in Westminster, uh, that the backstop is temporary, uh, that we're going to try to avoid using the backstop at all, uh, because it is only an insurance mechanism. Nobody wants to use it. Not in Dublin, not in London, not in Brussels. But if it is used, because we don't have other alternative arrangements that can do the job of the backstop, then it'll be, uh, it'll be in place for a temporary period of time unless and until we can replace it with alternative arrangements that can do that job. And we are open to that. The problem is that we haven't found any other alternative arrangements. It took two years to, to agree on, and the British government helped to design this, to agree on the backstop model. Uh, and so um, when other people talk about alternative arrangements that can work, most of those solutions have already been tested and they haven't stood up to scrutiny. And so we're, what we're saying is if there are alternative arrangements that work and do the same job, in other words, providing guarantees that no physical border infrastructure will be needed between the two jurisdictions, well, then they can replace the backstop in time. And that's catered for in the withdrawal agreement text already where alternative arrangements are referred to. It's catered for in the future relationship text already. And so what we're saying is that the withdrawal agreement legal text is finely balanced. It's a series of compromises from the EU as well as the UK. And if you start opening that now, other EU countries will start to look uh, for changes in wording to suit them as well. Okay. And so the way to do this is to change the wording of the future relationship declaration that can help to provide more clarity and reassurance to Westminster and if necessary to build on the clarification and reassurance that people like President Tusk and President Juncker and Michelle Barney have already offered but accept that we need to try to do more. So we want to try to help 
the Prime Minister and indeed the British Parliament find a majority to vote, uh, to vote for and support and ratify a withdrawal agreement. But okay. please don't ask Ireland to undermine something so fundamental uh, as a peace process that we should all be protecting.